So, true or false? 26% of the Dutch population has a disability. And answer true. Well, I have to be honest with you all. We actually don't know the exact number. How do we measure disability? Uh, there can be an overlap between disabilities, for example, uh, dyslexia and low literacy. Or what if you have multiple disabilities? Does that have a double weight? We don't, we don't know. What we do know is that every disabled person has the right to use the website uh, as everyone else. And I have this friend, and he, he, he started a, a company a couple of months ago, and he also released a new website. And he showed me that the other day, and he was really, really fancy about it, so I, I checked it, and it was full of accessibility. So that was the first problem. The second problem was my very Dutchy direct answer. So instead of saying something like, wow, your website looks great, shall I, shall I give you some tips to make it even better? Instead I said, oh man, this is never going to work. It's so inaccessible. And I was kind of flabbergasted about it. And maybe it was kind of harsh for me to say it like that. But it provoked a, a discussion about that. And he's this type of guy that needs a lot of scientific data and graphs and numbers to convince him. So his reaction was, well, I have a startup. If I can reach at least 10% of the Dutch population, at least, I would throw a big party because my, my, my business will be a success. Why should I invest in an accessible website? for those special 25% society. And we had a discussion and discussion and discussion. And finally, we came to the conclusion that we had a great misunderstanding about the why and the what and the how and, and so on. So those questions will be the base of this website. Clicker. So what is accessibility? Who is it? Why is it important? And of course, the how part. And I want to throw my disclaimer card because we all know live coding during the presentation always goes wrong. So sorry in advance. And I do know I do know things about accessibility, but I don't know every detail. So if you have very good tips and things to show me, uh, please do so. So what is accessibility? If you search through the web, you find, oh, sorry, I, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> who, who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Marloes, and I worked in, in healthcare for, for uh, 10 years. And I wasn't really, yeah, I, I didn't like my job a lot. So one day I just decided to go to a Drupal camp, and I met my boss, and he helped me to uh, make this career switch to a fundamental developer. Uh, that was at Lincoln Kuhn, and I still work there. And I also helped uh, co-organize Fund United 2018 and 2019. <laughs> so, again, what is accessibility? So if you search through the web, you find multiple definitions. This is one of them. Web accessibility means that people with disabilities can use the web. Wow, well, kind of makes sense though, but it's this part that, that, that doesn't feel right. Because it implies that you need an accessible, accessible website for disabled people. I'd rather use this one. Web accessibility means that websites, tools, and technologies are designed and developed to work for all people, whatever their hardware, software, uh, ability. And it also answers our next question. Who is it important? These are some reasons why it is important. And we must not forget, Google, for example, is, is our best tester, our, our blind user, our deaf user, everything. And if it helps, like everyone, we can also answer our next question. Why is it important? Because we all benefit from it. 
right? And also, more and more products are being offered online. I have to be honest, I haven't seen a supermarket inside for like two, three months because I order my groceries at Picnic. And also, we're becoming more dependent on it. Taxes, we don't mind. It's also a, a good business for, for larger companies, smaller companies, every company, because you target an audience that you've never targeted before. You can make more profit. And don't forget the legal part. And for all us developers, are there any developers, non-developers? Non-developers are sent? I know, that's my <laughs> Developers, we can do this! Technology is no longer a limiting factor. Alright? So, how do we do it? Who has never heard of the web accessibility guidelines? Raise hands? No, Ryan, no. <laughs> So, we have the guidelines, just just small, small introduction. We have these guidelines, they are defended by uh, the World Wide Web Consortium. And this is the base, sorry for, for that. Okay. We have the, the principles, and we have some subjects inside those principles, which are called the guidelines. And then we have the success criteria where we can test upon. And those success criteria are um, uh, based on levels of conformance. A is very basic, AA uh, covers the most common problems, and triple A, well, that's hard, that's complex. So the government standard uh, required by law is AA. Now, time for the coding part. Who has ever heard of Freinder? Raise hands. Good, because of my own brain part. Think Tinder. Think Grinder. Now we have Grinder. Does it work? Oh, yeah, it does it, yeah. So, meet Grinder. <laughs> this is a platform for front end developers to find front end love. <laughs> yeah. So, we have some profiles, we have some events, we have some news, and of course, everything is built in Drupal. Even though it looks fancy, is it accessible? Oh, we're gonna find out. So first, if I take a look at this page, I see headings. I see a page title, finder, a profile, the events, I have news, and news have titles as well. But if you disable the styles, and this is a, a web developer tool I use for own, it, it's also available for Firefox. So I disable all my CZ right now. And as you can see, this, this main navigation and, and the search is browse the default heading, heading style. If you scroll down, where are my headings? There are no headings, as you all can see. So the headings only look like headings. They aren't really headings. So back to the style again. And of course, this is Drupal. So all this information comes from different templates and from all together, and then we have a page. So if we want to create a correct heading structure, we have to change multiple templates. Uh, let me check, check, check. So we have the, a node, which in this case I use the node for the homepage. And instead of this div for the finder, I created the first heading tag. So we covered the first page title. Then I added all those events and profiles and uh, news items with paragraphs. So I have this paragraph template right here. And again, I disabled this, this div and changed it into a, a second heading tab. And then we have the, these, these cards. And I have multiple cards I have. And again, I changed the div into a third heading tag and also for the other part and we go back to and we do a refresh and ta-da! it's exactly the same <laughs> but if we disable all the styles again well doesn't that look better? hmm, something's wrong? no, it's not 
Yeah? So, we got that covered. But we, we created, uh, I created a heading structure based on this conference, based on this, this page. So if I check the heading levels right there, uh, is, is this really cool, the, this? For, uh, in the back? I can maybe, better? <coughs> More accessible now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we have a first, and we have a second, and we have a third, and, and so on. But uh, in, in Drupal, well, personally, I re reuse view mode. So I reuse this, this view, mode, view mode on other pages uh, because it looks the same, it has the same fields, it has the same behavior. I don't think it very, it's not really uh, necessary to create a new view mode, view mode. It, it is, it's exactly the same. So let's, let's go to another page now. I want to show the extra profiles. Right here. Can we explain why a proper heading structure is important? Sorry? Why is a proper heading structure important? Because it bundles information. And also, um, uh, uh, Google likes, likes the headings. Uh, it crawls you through your website, and if you if he detects a certain, certain heading with, with, with a search term you, you looked for, it can create a snippet based on that heading and put it in the search results. So, um, yeah, the heading levels. So I reuse the same uh, card from the profile page on the profile's landing page, so, so we're not on the front page anymore. And as you can see, we first have the first heading tag, but as we saw earlier, this is a third heading tag. So now, we have a missing heading level. And we can do multiple things. We can create a view mode exactly the same as this, but change the template and use a second heading tag instead of a third heading tag. We can write a pre-process saying that on the front page we should be a third heading tag, but on the landing page yeah, you should be a second one. Uh, use, use a very good cache tag, otherwise it doesn't work. In this case I'm just a very lazy developer and add a second heading tag in my template, which is another another template that we used before, just like this, and bam, there we go. We fixed all the heading structures on this page as well. So these contexts we can influence as as developers, but it becomes kind of tricky when we talk about the busy big editor, just like this. So we want uh, to give editors the freedom to add their own heading tags, right? But they always, well, most of the time, uh, they don't understand the importance of that structure, the heading level structure. So here is a third heading tag, which is enabled here. And this is a second heading tag. And we have a, a very wrong uh, structure on, on that page. I will show you how that looks like. Just like this. And this, this bold and beautiful thing, just like here, isn't even a heading. They copy and pasted it from, from Word or something like that and thought it was a heading, but it wasn't, in fact. Or another reason I heard recently, yeah, I like the style better. <laughs> All right, whatever you want. You should have told me and I will update it. So uh, it's quite, quite important to uh, tell our editors how to use this heading structure. So, like I said before, headings are, are a way to bundle your information. If I, if I open this book, it's, it's a big scope book, and I open it on a random page, Minecraft cookie, well, look at that. I expect everything of the Minecraft cookies to be on this page under this heading, right? It would be weird if, if this would be right here. Correct? Alright. So, what we do as, as developers is most of the time create a structure which is based on design. 
It's a copy paste in the in, in the design. So I will show you an example. Look, look at this this pizza party event. I love pizza, so I would definitely go there. We can conclude based on this visual context that the pizza party is at the 4th of July. Raise hands if you agree. All right. So if I disable my styles again, oh sorry, no, no. I will search for the pizza party. Pizza, oh, pizza party. Yes, pizza party. Yes, uh, food. Yes, food. Hey, wrong picture. 18th of July. I'm too late. What just happened? What happened? So, that's my point. We, we created st structure because the design looks like this. We didn't thought about the real structure beneath it. And we're going to fix that as well. So, I have this uh, node bundle car template. Mm. And every div, uh, this is the event date. And this is the, the image. And I will add, so here, here's the heading, the, the third heading. And now I will add the image right here, beneath the heading, and also the event date. And I will refresh it. And, oh, we broke it, but that's for later. If we now disable the styles, and we go to the pizza party again, at least we're going to uh, the pizza party on the 4th of July, and we have a better picture. So, the structure is good, we only have to fix the styling now. And with Flexbox, you can change order of elements only based on the visual, so no visual, you don't update the structure. And, and check this group, yeah. So we have this flex order, and I added some classes, and I say, well, the image and the date should have an order minus one, stating that you should always be the first element of your uh, parent. And then, this happens. You're back. Yes. So now we have we, we look at the the event at, at one part. But now we have to look at the the, the, the broader picture to all these, these these little things together. So the, the small problem with, with Drupal, I think, is everything, almost everything, in a field is outputted as a div. So how does it look like? Uh, this. If label hidden, if multiple, else if multiple. What does it even mean? I, I have no idea what, what it's actually saying. So I did an override of, of my template for, for those paragraph items, and in, in the essence, it's really this. We create a parent div, and all the items get div. But semantically speaking, it's an, an ordered list with list items. So we Updated all the days with an oh. um, yeah, like that. And now we have an, an ordered list. And again, the styling is broken. As you can see, all those bullets. But we don't want that bullets. So we're going to disable them. With the list of type num. And they're gone. So there's a, a, a small uh, bug, or I'm not sure it's a bug or, or, or it's, it's intentionally. Um, if you use list of type num, voiceover will not recognize the, the imported list system any, anymore. Which is really, really strange that CSS has influence on the HTML semantics. And I, I'm not really sure why, but I just read a small solution by Scholar Era that if we add a pseudo element, oh, which isn't before, uh, and what, what is said is just add a small little white space 
and a position absolute, so you are sure that it doesn't take any space in your in your uh, in your uh, in your in your list. <laughs> and now it's the, now voiceover can see the semantics again. It's really really weird, and it still looks the same, but you fix the, the semantic problem here. So. A, a small recap about, about this. Yeah. We want to use heading tags to bundle information. Always double check your heading levels on every page and provide a meaningful DOM order. So we all get pizza on the 4th of July, all right? Yeah. Okay, good. So next I want to talk about links and, and buttons. So, so, I have a beautiful link right here, and I'm not colorblind, so I can perfectly see this is a link. But what if you are visually impaired? Can we still see it's a link? Ah, exactly. So if you have a link in your text, always, always make sure that it's indicated by everything else except color alone. So instead of mm, uh, text decoration none, I will create a underline and this text underline position uh, kind of functions like a border button online. It makes sure there's a little bit more space between between the, the actual text uh, to make it a little bit better readable. It's not supported in every browser yet but it looks way nicer if you ask me. So here is our link. So we got that covered. Uh, let me turn the colors again. So we always use, well at least most of the time, every website I make, I always use icons as a link. For example, these the social share buttons. Oh, you cannot see it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Yes. So we have LinkedIn, and we have Twitter, and we have YouTube. And again, if I disable my styles, where is my link? Does someone know which this is? Which link? Yeah, that's just a good guess. <laughs> so what we can do is add text. This uh, this is uh, in my page template, so I will go on. Um, right here. So I will enable some spans with the actual text in it, uh, with a clause visually hidden. And this clause you can use in Drupal out of the box. It's it's just in there in core. And let me check the the CSS. Where are you? Hmm. I can find it right here. It's one of the in, in one of the modules. In the hidden module actually. And it's not hidden as well, so that makes sense. So this is the CSS that comes with it. So these attributes make sure it's really, really small and not very visible. And this word wrap normal makes sure that the words won't stick together. There will be white space between the words. Otherwise, it will be, we will eat pizza tonight. And now it will be, we will eat pizza tonight. So what happened here, since we enabled this spawns with, with, uh, with the visually hidden, is they look the same. But if we disable the styles again, we now have our links. Okay, so next is, um, I use background image, images for this. Uh, sometimes I use inline SVGs. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to talk about this one, so don't worry. But sometimes I really need to use an image. 
and in this case, my image uh, links to the Mignon Chrome website. And what a link does is it goes somewhere, so it has to tell me where it goes to. And in this case, I don't have to use uh, a, a link text, because the alt text will function as the link text. So a small problem here is I, um, is it visible? So my alt text here for this is Limon Loco. So actually it says here, I go to Limon Loco. Now I'm not, I'm going to the corporate website. So if you use an image as, as a link, use the alt text to create your link text. So I'm going to disable uh, the alt text in my page template and update it with Limon Kun corporate website. Alright. Also important for link text is they should be unique. And let's say I have multiple links on, on, on this front page. And I have several of show more. Show more. Show show more. So let's say your name is Brian, right? Your name is Brian, your name is Brian, your name is Brian. And if I ask you, did Brian order the pizza? Who did order the pizza? I wish, I wish. So, so this, this, this system also accounts for the show more. Did you visit it show more? Which show more? We don't know. So we want to make uh, the link test a little bit more unique. And I have this button in my um, paragraph. And instead, I, I replace the, the text with the title in it. So it becomes show more profiles, show more events, show more news. Yeah. So this is the part where the designer comes to you and clicks on your show window. That's not what I designed. So if he doesn't like this, we can also uh, add visually hidden clause again to the part we just added. So. And now it's just the same. And if we disable the styles, we still have to show more profiles and show more news and show more events. So, like links, uh, like I told before, links go somewhere and buttons do something. So, if you have an, an, an anchor tag with an empty href, use a button. So, we have multiple buttons in um, in this. Um, in this website, and one of the most popular is this, this hamburger menu thingy. So, I can open it and close it. Matthew, is this menu open or closed? No, it's open. Yeah? Is it open? Raise hands? Okay, good. Just, just to be sure. Yeah? So I'm going to click on the menu button now several times. I'm really clicking. Matthew, is this menu open or closed? It's open. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Give it a guess. Come on. I'm going to say it's open. It's open. Have a good guess on it. Oh, we should go to the casino, man. <laughs> wow, good guess. But could you really see that it was open? So, if a button do, does something, make sure you indicate the state of the button the, in the button text. So, we're going to up, update our JavaScript for this, or jQuery in fact. So, I have these variables right here, and instead of menu, I would say open menu, close menu. I'm going to refresh it, disable the styles. Uh, Sorry. 
Oh, I can't put it on that one. Metro, is it open or closed? Now it's open. Nice! <laughs> so there is one small thing with our menu uh, button right here. So we indicated the state. If I open it, I'm clicking. I'm clicking, I'm clicking, and it doesn't work. And when I try this on my mobile phone with my Freddy finger, it's, it's a hell. So we want to make sure that the clickable area of the button is, is, is good enough. So we're going to update that as well. And I created a, a variable right here with saying it's 48 pixels by 48 pixels. I'm going to enable that. And since uh, the, the button will be bigger right now, we compensate the margins a little bit. So, so we will make sure that they're still close together. And now we can click up, go away. Make it way better. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to put it on the other side. Is that better? I mean, oh, I can double check this. If you want to know what your clickable area is, let's say background color red. So even if you're a little bit next to the cross, you can still open the menu. <coughs> All right. So, uh, a small recap about the, the links and the buttons. Links go somewhere and buttons do something. And always make sure that the link and your button is recognizable and good clickable. Provide a meaningful and unique text in your link and in your button and communicate the state of the button if, if it does something. So, the last thing I want, want to cover is, is focus. How is the time? Yeah, alright, good. So, I'm going to refresh that one. So, um, I will open my console. No, you cannot see that, I guess. Who has never navigated through uh, the website with a keyboard? So to be sure, for with tab you go to all the links and inputs and buttons. With shift tab you go back. Uh, you have enter and spacebar to create some actions. If I tab to my website, where am I? You can see that, right? How can you see that? So the problem is here, we deleted the outline. And we're going to enable that again. Oh. Yeah. And now it's back. And this is the part where the designer comes back again and ticks on the shoulder. Can you please remove that ugly blue line? And I would never hire Obama to say this. No, we can. But we can adjust it to fit it in the theme. And I like these, these dots. You know. Don't you think that's beautiful? But since we adjusted the focus style, we have to make sure it's visible at all costs, everywhere. The, the blue line was, was browser default, so it's not our responsibility, but this is. And we, we made it wide in this case. But if I go further down the line, oh, so now I want love, it's gone again. So double check that every time. The contrast of your focus needs to be visible, it needs to be high enough. So, here is why, and now we created the back left dotted line right here. Yeah? Good. So, another important thing is the focus order. If you take a look at this header, 
Yeah, logo, menu, search. Logo, menu, search. Repeat after me. <laughs> logo, menu, search. Logo, menu, search. Okay, one more time. Are you sure? Yeah. Ah, no. And this is also a, a thing about hamburger menus. Because in design, sorry, forget the end. Most of the designs, the hamburger, hamburger menu is always on the far right. Well, it doesn't matter actually, but we do have to make sure that our focus order is correct. So if we tap through it now, it's indeed uh, the, the logo and the menu. Oh, no, something went wrong here. Uh, search, and then search, and then it's the menu. But we don't want that. We want to make sure that the DOM structure is exactly the same on mobile, tablet, and in desktop. So we appended our button to the wrong place. We want to place it before the search. Just like that. Just like on desktop. But the styling can be different, so we can reuse the flexbox uh, thing again. And add an order three to it. So it will be placed on the far right, but still be before the search in our DOM structure. and then search. So, if you noticed, my focus here is gone. Where is my focus? <laughs> <laughs> where is my, my focus? Oh, it made it made worse. Where is my focus right now? Yeah, exactly. But the whole point of the hamburger menu is to make the menu items disappear, right? Yeah. But they're still here. Not for, for, for visual people, but for screen readers. So, we want to make sure that, that the list items are now visible for screen readers and not for us as sighted users. So we added this pin on, only on smaller grade points, of course, because we want the whole menu on, on larger screen sizes. And when our menu is open, we want the display as well, so they will be visible. Oh, this side? Yeah. So we go on there, yeah. Logo, menu, search. And we go to open it, and now, oh, it's broken. Because our focus is somewhere here behind the page. We want to make sure that if we open our menu with the menu button, the first menu item should receive focus afterwards. So, instead, we appended our main navigation again wrong because we want to place the button before the menu items. So again, logo, menu, search, back to menu, open it, and here we go. So, small recap again. Right here. So, about focus management. management. The focus styling must be visible at all costs. If you update the focus styling, the outline or, or the board, or whatever you like, Make sure the contrast is high enough as well. Always create a logical focus order and manipulate the focus when needed. And most important of all, disable your styles from time to time. Your native DOM structure, structure tells you a lot about what's really happening on your page. Don't make any conclusions only based on what you see. And navigate through your website with your keyboard. Thank you. Are there any questions? No?
Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> what browser extensions did you use? Yes, I will show you. Um, well, I, I use multiple. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But the question was which which uh, browser extensions did I use? At least. Well, if if I do some testing, I use. Where is it again? I normally use a lot of more browser extensions, but in this case I use the, uh, yeah, the high contrast tool, and this is the, the heading map tool, and this is the web uh, development tool. I will send out a tweet later on if you, if you want to check it, or we can write it down at the words. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. It's very interesting. Um, I'm wondering, in your last example, in your demo, mm -hmm. when you make the screen smaller and you open up the menu, then you go through the links after the open button. Oh, what so ideally should happen once you now hit tab again? Yeah, that is the thing I struggle a lot with, and I'm the accessibility expert right here. But I did made a mechanism, and tell me if it's wrong, but I'm not sure. If I open the button and I go to all my links, now I added some jQuery to set the focus back to the button. Otherwise, the focus will go behind your menu and it doesn't close and your focus is gone again. So, sorry. I think it's called focus trap. Yeah, yeah. Focus trap? Yeah, focus, focus trap. trap. Focus trap. Focus, focus trap. trap. So it's, uh, that's ideal, right? But then you should search and the logo will still be accessible too. Because it's very hard to see where you should draw the line of what should be focused on shouldn't. Because if you now open up the menu, but you can still see other UI elements, mm -hmm. visual users will be able to shortcut to search without closing the menu for you. So, mm -hmm. well, but I, users too. there was a small bug in, in, in this, but normally if I uh, click on another element, the menu will automatically close. Uh, but I removed this from because it gave a lot of bugs, and I'm not sure if it was. But if I open this, normally the menu will collapse. Um, as, as, as a mouse user, and again, yeah, I, I, I still finally I have to go there. I can go to on my logo. I can go to the search. I never can. can I cannot go to the search because the, the the menu is before the search in Chrome. I can only go to uh, the uh, the logo, and it will lead me to the front page. And then, does that answer your question? Any more questions? Um, the one annoying question. Um, where do you draw the line if your client doesn't want to pay for it? For example, uh, sometimes you have to upload videos, and for videos you have to do a lot of stuff like uh, create transcripts and uh, subtitles and all that stuff. And sometimes clients really do not want to invest that much in it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in my dream world, I would say, so listen, just don't do this. But, uh, well, in the end, my part uh, is accessible. I will make sure that everything I can, I will make accessible. But when the, the site is live, they add the videos. So it's not my responsibility anymore, in, in a kind of way. Because I'm not the one adding the videos. Should, is it my responsibility that I enable the, the, the subtitles on YouTube? I don't think so. No, but you could, for example, uh, make the transcripts uh, uh, required, basically. Yeah, well, that's another story then. If I can answer that, but, yeah, sure. uh, we, we are team members of the Frontend United organization, and we use an external provider uh, called ref.com, which you uh, found it. Um, and it's a paid service that, you can, that will connect your YouTube videos or import your YouTube videos to it, and you pay for it and for the transcriptions. And they really upload the videos to YouTube and have the subscriptions for you. It's really easy. And for Front United, we did that. The cost of a bit of money. Yeah, it doesn't cost nothing. The video of an hour costs $1 per minute. Yeah, we, we did all the videos for Front United, which were like 24 full track sessions on an hour, so like 22 hours of video. 
we pay like thousand dollars in total. I think for a client that's really yeah. easy to pay. But like you have to give them the FRIs, right? I guess we should have done. We give them the FRIs. Yeah, but it's not the same as, uh, not every, and correct me if I'm wrong, not every screen reader reads out the title, okay. the, the title actually. Okay. It always uh, reads out the, the, the link text. We still have a little bit of time, so I was thinking maybe, Brian, can you shine some light on, because you've, you've been testing hundreds of websites and accessibility, uh, maybe you can give some extra advice or tips of, of bugs that you always see in websites that Marus didn't cover yet. Maybe we can do some accessibility tests right here, right sure. now. Yeah? yeah. Who has a website <laughs> that needs to be tested? For example, Pomboni or something. <laughs> oh, this is a Mac. I can't. Oh, yeah, I, I will help you. That's no yeah. problem. Give us the number of Zeke, Zebra. Sorry? Give us the number of Zeke, Zebra. What what website were you testing? Drupal or Form. Yeah, for example, Drupal, Drupal, Drupal got an L, of course. Oh, there's caps lock somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. This one? Yeah. All right. Um, well, when, when I test, uh, I do we, do you need, do we need this microphone then, bro? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. We're going to use this one? This is this? Oh, yeah, that yeah, works. And I don't only have one. one, one Shall I help you with the inspector? <laughs> because it's not Windows. <laughs> yeah, so I, I need a right click. <laughs> Yeah, so so I, I don't really use X when I when I when I test websites. I mean, I can do it, I can do it on my own. We we can do we can do it still. Do this. Uh, I don't I don't want this. We want to connect your own laptop. Yeah. How many times do we have? Five. Oh. Well, he's very tall. Shall I hold the... Can you hold this? Yes, of course. Right, so where were we? Uh, Drupal. So, well, where? It's a, where? There we go. So we have a website, and I just usually run through the the code from the top. So. Um, I start with, it, with, with just uh, the HTML element. We have a lang attribute that signifies to the screen reader you should read this in uh, Dutch. And this is a Dutch website, so it will read it correctly. Uh, otherwise, you, you guys probably have, have a navigation in your, in your uh, uh, cars and stuff. If this would be um, uh, AN for English, uh, then it would read the English, it would read the Dutch English. words in English which is horrible, but hilarious to try for, for, <laughs> for a second. Now we have a title that's also visible here, which is, which is fine, it looks good. Uh, I'll just make my screen brighter. Um, now we have a link, it says uh, skip and go to main content. It's a visually hidden link, just, just like Malus uh, just showed, um, which means that, that uh, your, your normal, or normal user, your, your, your your non-keyboard non user won't be bothered by this link, but your keyboard user will see this link. Or, I suppose, he would see the link if the main menu didn't hide this link. So is that an issue as well? Should it be uh, this visible is, at all costs? Yeah, this is definitely an issue. I cannot see where this link will go, so th this would be a finding. Um, 
uh, where, where am I? Right. So, um, so, so, so somebody at one point added um, added this this uh, uh, link here. Go to the menu, and then never tested it again with this main menu um, to see if it actually physically. Then we then we have uh, the navigation. Uh, there's a link to a home page, which has an image a uh, home, which is which is good. I mean, it, it, it does lead to the home page. But what I'm missing here is that um, I'm on the Drupal page, and I don't know that I'm on the Drupal page um, because th this logo is also the information about who has made this website. So what I would do here is have uh, home uh, Drupal or something like that. Can I add something? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think personally that this part of the code comes from the uh, the system branding block we all use in Drupal, and this is default in Drupal, so we yeah. should all adjust it with our site name into the alt text. Indeed. All right. Indeed. Yeah. Um, so I'll skip that first block then and see what what the, the actual website does. Um, this looks good. So this is this is the main. The main image, the big image here, which has an, has an alt attribute to uh, Drupal Excel uh, 2019, which will get read out loud by screen readers. Then we have an um, uh, empty <coughs> link. Right. So, so this, so this will be will be read out loud by screen readers as link without uh, a link target, um, because it has the image, but this image has no text alternative. There is nothing in this in this link. So the screen reader will simply read this as link. Bad. Um, so this is a lot better because it's simply text. Um, we have text. We have another empty. Oh, but this is a top index minus one. I have no idea what this is doing here. Uh, and we have an article. I, I think we're running out of time. We have to quit. Right. But if you want to see this any further, please come to the little home launch and we will finish this. Or get, get your own website tested. Or get your own website tested. It's not a very large yep. problem. <laughs> well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much.